Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Link. And I'm Sonic. And what am I? Oh, it's time for the grand unveiling, Bajo. Yes, now, Darren, remember, this is exactly what the Spawnlings voted you to be. It had nothing to do with us, but they voted for our cosplay special. Well, that's right, and I hope you don't mind us dressing you while you were powered down, but we wanted it to be a surprise. Yeah. Oh, all right, show me, show me. Next, you do the honours. Negative! The companion cube from Portal? But, but I don't want to be a cube. It's just a boring box. Uh, yeah, it's perfect, Darren. Well, why couldn't I have been Mario or, or Naruto or, or a colourful Pokemon? Oh, no, Darren, the companion cube is great. It's got that cool little heart on the front and it's really useful for... You know, dropping on things. Yeah, yeah. And, and Darren, you know, part of cosplay is staying in character. That means all day today throughout the episode, you need to be super helpful, <laughs> hold open doors for us, and, you know, not talk very much, because companion cubes don't talk very much. But hey, how about my costume? Isn't this the best Sonic you've ever seen? Right? Uh, I must say, Hex, that is a wonderful link from The Legend of Zelda that you've created. Thank you, Darren. I've gone for the fire-resistant tunic today, and it just makes me want to go off on adventures and discover magical artefacts and treasure chests. Da -da -da -da. Well, don't go adventuring just yet, Hex, because coming up on the show, we have a review of Sound Shapes. <laughs> Goose goes to meet a gamer whose hobby is cosplay. Sonic here at the Spawn Point News Desk. Uh, it's a bit hard to read my news with this on. Hang on. <clears throat> it's a bit hard to, a bit hard to pick up my news. I'll just memorize it. Researchers at the Princeton University in America have created a video game for fish. The game is designed to help the researchers understand the behaviour of bluegill sunfish and how they hunt their prey. By projecting small dots that the fish are attracted to, they found that the fish were more likely to attack solitary dots or prey. <coughs> Got it. Legendary game designer Peter Molyneux has had to change the name of his new game because of the Mars rover landing. His game was going to be called Curiosity, an experimental project to test the morality of monetization. Players from around the world will chip away at a mystery cube, with only one player eventually reaching the center, revealing its mystery. NASA's recent success with the Mars rover named Curiosity encouraged the space agency to block the use of the name. Molyneux has reached out over social media to find a new name for the project. And that's the news. I better dash off to the studio. Oh, I'm exhausted. Oh. Okay, oh. well, now Goose catches up with cosplayer Camille. Hi, I'm Camille. I'm a gamer and I'm also a cosplayer. Okay, Camille, can you tell me what's cosplay all about? So cosplay is um, dressing up as a character and it, it involves two parts. So you actually dress as the character, but then you also have to act the character. So it's like embodying a character entirely. It's a compound word of cos, costume, and play, acting. Okay, so how did you first get into cosplaying? Well, I've been making costumes since I was 12. Um, before that, my mum used to make them for me, so I've loved costuming for a long time. But when I started university last year, um, there was a costume society, so I actually joined that and through them discovered cosplay. And there's a whole sort of um, community for cosplay, which is really great. <laughs> awesome. So how do you come up with the characters that you're going to cosplay as? first thing I do is, when I'm watching a movie or playing a game, I take note of any characters whose costumes I really, really like, and then I save a little picture of them to my computer. So I've got a list of ones that I'd like to cosplay in the future. Well, the most recent one I've done is Princess Peach, and I basically made her because um, I was invited to join a group of people doing a Super Smash Brothers cosplay group, and that group fell through, but I'd already bought all the fabric, so I decided to make it anyway. I try and vary it as much as I can. I don't want to get stuck in a stereotype, so I try and do things that are as different as I possibly can each time. And every time I make a costume, I try and use a new skill, teach myself something so that each time it becomes easier. So how do you actually go about making these costumes? I can show you if you'd like. Great. OK, so the first thing I do is I get as many reference pictures as I can of the character, and then I'll do my own sketches from every different angle to try and figure out which version of their costume I'm going to do, because often characters' costumes change. Then 
I will try and find a paper pattern. I'll find one that's as close as I can to the costume I'm trying to make because that makes my job a lot easier and use that to cut out the pieces of the pattern, sew them all together. And then I really have to start customising. So often a character will have a pattern on their, on their fabric or just something that's, that's different from the pattern or a fabric that I can't purchase. So then I'll have to paint or sew ribbon on until it looks like the same pattern. Wigs and contacts, I'll usually go online to buy any accessories I can find. <laughs> Aside from sewing things, what are some of the other techniques and skills you need to use for, to make a cosplay costume? Well, the, the thing I've recently discovered that's actually the most useful is clay. Because if you need to make any accessories like these, um, you can actually sculpt them instead of having to buy something. Usually sewing the basic garment doesn't take too long, but then once you have to put patterns on it and do all the little complicated details, it becomes quite time consuming. Fair enough. A big part about cosplaying is the events that you go to. What kind of events are there for people who like cosplaying? Um, well, there are a whole bunch of conventions that run all through the year. So you've got Supernova, Smash, Animania, Armageddon, Oz Comic Con, um, Heroes and Villains is coming up. There is quite a large community I've become involved with, so you do see the same people cosplaying every time, but it's sometimes really hard to recognise them. I think the thing I enjoy most is actually becoming a character. It's, it's quite a challenge to step away from yourself. It's a creative process, it's, it's a challenge, and I do enjoy, enjoy making them as well. So what advice would you have to any spawnlings who want to get started cosplaying? What's the first thing they should do? I'd say probably start with a character that you really love because the better you know the character, the better that you can portray them yourself. But don't do a, a costume that's too complicated to start with. Start with something fairly simple so you can learn to sew first and then progress from there. Just make sure you have fun with it. It's the most important thing is that you enjoy it. Thanks, Goose. Wow, that Princess Peach cosplay was amazing, it's wasn't fantastic, it? fantastic. Yeah, cool. Uh, are you going to get your computer ready? Uh, okay. Um, how about I just help you with that? Thanks. Because you have giant oversized hands. Brilliant. Hey, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, answer some questions. Uh, this one is from Dr. Cool in Benalla, Victoria. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I thought it was my real hand for a second. <laughs> hey, GGSB. Mm-hmm. I've asked this question about a million times. Just kidding. A few weeks ago, I heard a rumour about a PS3 version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I would like to know if it is true and where I can get it. PS Barjo, you are awesome. Thanks, Dr. Cool. But no, that's not true. There's no PS3 version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl in development, and it's highly unlikely there ever will be. The Super Smash Bros. games are exclusive to Nintendo, so you'll only ever see those on Nintendo consoles like the Wii or 3DS. Although, Hex, although they did once say that about Sonic, and now he's all over the shop. <laughs> but there is a game coming out for the PS3 that is definitely inspired by Smash Brothers. It's the same kind of game where up to four popular Sony mascots can brawl around a whole bunch of levels. Yes, it's called PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, and it will feature characters like Fat Princess, Sly Cooper, and Sackboy, to name a few. And that's due out in a few months, on November 22nd, to be precise. Hmm, easy enough. Moving on to this one from I'm No Noob, in Behind You, <gasps> Western Australia. Hey, GGSP, just wondering, can you give me a few tips for pockety planes? Please answer, or I will be a noob. P.S. Banjo is awesome. Hex is cool. And Darren is a mega noob. Why did you say Hex is cool in like a really small voice and then Barjo was awesome in a really big voice? Uh, because it's the intonation of that particular adjective, Hex. So awesome is awesome, but when you say you're cool, it's like, yeah, I'm cool, yeah, I'm cool. If you said I'm cool, then that wouldn't be cool, right? Okay. Yeah, we cool. Hmm. Uh, sure, we can give you a couple of tips. First off, we always go for fares that pay in bucks rather than coin if we can, since those are usually worth more. Each buck can be traded for 500 or more coins in the bank, and the more bucks you trade at once, the more each one is worth. When you're picking up fares, you can hold down the load button and it will load everyone going to that same destination. And if you're dropping off fares, you can do the opposite by holding down the unload button to drop everyone off at once. Also, you should try and lay over passengers at a few convenient hub cities to make it easier to fill planes with passengers all going to the same destination, which will give you a hefty 25% bonus to the fares. And of course, join our flight crew and participate in the global challenges when you can. Those can net you some nice prizes ranging from bucks to rare plane parts. 
But anyway, let's move on to this one from Monster Man uh, in... Also behind you. Where is, where is this place? It's behind us. I mean, but they're never there, are they? Maybe, maybe they're just hiding. Maybe we don't see them when we turn around. Mm. I watched your episodes all the time, but I didn't get the name of the game a month or so. <laughs> it was a game that I think you reviewed that is a cave platform game where you have to fin the door that you said it was really hard to complete because the layout changes every time it starts a new level. Well, Monster Man, I'm pretty sure the game you're talking about is called Spelunky, and we reviewed the newly released Xbox Arcade version, so you'll only find that online in the game's marketplace on 360. And also, it's not just hard because the layout changes, it's hard because just about everything is out to get you, and lots of it can get you instantly. There's no checkpoints. Once you die, you go right back to the start of the game. It's brutal. Mm. But you can actually play the old retro version absolutely free on Windows and Macs, and you can even play it on your browser. Just do a web search for Spelunky and you'll find it easily. Well, good luck with it, Monster Man. It's a tough game. But moving on now to this one from King Steve Dud 101. Ah, ah, XP in noobs, no noobs allowed, land only pros outside Australia. That is a really long title for a place. King Steve. Why Darren have spaghetti scooper hand? P.S. Can you survive with no wood and no trees and no food on Minecraft? PPS, Darren is a no There's a lot of O's, it goes on for quite a while. Uh, no then it's a hundred years later. Ooh. Bajo is cool. I won't Bajo to answer. Well, thanks, Your Highness King Steve, but I don't know, where does Darren's spaghetti scooper hands come from, Hex? They do seem a bit impractical, especially on the keyboard. How does he... Hmm? You know, I mean, I honestly have no idea. He's a riddle wrapped in an enigma, that one. Hmm. Uh, why don't you just give him a call and ask him? I'm sure he'd love to tell you. Good idea, Hex. Oh. I've got it. I've got it. I'll just... I've got it. Careful with my laptop. I'll dial. Thanks. Hey Darren, g'day, it's Bancho here from Good Game at the oh. Good Game desk. I was just like to asking you, where did your part of scoop, past the scoop hands come from? They're a bit weird. Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's a, it's a long story. Uh, can you make it a short story, Darren? Well, well, I'll try. You see, Dad bought, it was actually a famous pasta chef bought my home galaxy, and he could scoop spaghetti at a rate of a thousand strands a second, you know. <laughs> and if you know anything about robot genetics, you know that robot hands are always passed down from the father's side. That is it's, true. A, it's a funny story, actually. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. a really funny story. That's great, Darren, but that's all I need to know. Thank you very much. See, when I was a small kid, nice talking to Dad I'm just going to hang up the phone. Of <laughs> oh, no. I've got it. It's safe. Well, there you go, King Steve. As for surviving in Minecraft without wood, trees or food, we'd have to say absolutely not, unless you're playing in creative mode. You need wood to make tools and torches, which are essential to surviving. And without food, you'll just starve to death eventually, so you do need them. I think we should just both agree that you shouldn't touch anything for the remainder sure. of the uh, sure. episode. Could you put that in writing? I'll put it in writing for you. Just no! All right, well, I think we've got time for one more question, and, uh, oh, it's from uh, Bargo in uh, Sydney, New South Wales. Oh. No! Hi, Bargo here. I don't know why people keep mentioning me in your show. It's honestly getting a little weird. My question is, what game would you suggest for someone buying their first fighting game? Thanks. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Ah, you're that awesome Bargo guy everyone keeps talking about. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. There are a couple of good fighting games we'd recommend. I'd say Super Street Fighter 4 would be a great one to start with. The Street E series has been around for ages, and it is an absolute classic in the world of fighting games. It's easy enough for a beginner to get into, but delve deep enough in these layers of competitive gaming, you can start tearing apart. And you can get that on 360, PS3, 3DS, and I think it's on PC as well. Hey? You might also like to check out Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. It meshes the characters from a lot of Capcom games, including Street Fighter, against tons of Marvel heroes and villains like Spider-Man, Iron Man and Wolverine, to name a few. And that's available on 360 and PS3. And if you want something a bit more chaotic, you might enjoy Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which we mentioned earlier. It's a bit different from most fighting games and meshes a heap of platforming into the action. But it's got tons of classic Nintendo characters and a few other guests battling it out in some cool stages. It's a great one to play with friends too. And there's plenty of other great fighting games out there, but we'd say any of those are great ones to, you know, get you started. But on that note, we're out of time for this week. Oh. If you've got a question you'd like us to answer, then jump on here and send it in. All right, I'll just put the stuff away, Hex. No, don't, please, don't touch it. Sorry, Hex. Wait. Yes. 
squashing me! Sorry. Let me just take... Get past the scoops. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Just welcome back. Well, thanks, Aaron. Sound Shapes is a platform across with a music creator for Sony's handheld, the Vita, and the PS3. You play as a blob-like thing. I like to think of it as an egg. An egg? Yeah, because it's got the little yolk and then the, the bit around the outside, the white bit. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. Egg. Nice. You play the game with just two buttons. X makes your egg blob jump, and either square or R causes you to lose its egg white part. This has two effects. You move faster and you no longer stick to things. It's a bit like the 2D Mario games. Yeah, and just like the Mario games, it's simple controls but some tricky gameplay. Everything from timing your jumps perfectly to racing through a section to get through a gate. But the platforming is only part of the game, and what really sets this game apart is its music. Almost everything you see creates music, from the enemies that crawl along the ground to missiles that groove along. And those levels with the vocal elements just... Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I expected this to be a rhythm game, you know, where you hit buttons and time to the beat, but it's not that at all. This is about layering the music from screen to screen and seeing it change and evolve as you progress. Hex, I don't think I've grooved along to a game this much in a long time, and knowing that everything you're hearing has been created by what's on screen is amazing. Yeah, and there's no object or enemy that feels like it's there to make a sound for the sake of it. It's just a, a seamless combination of music and platforming. The developers have collaborated with some indie musicians for not just the music, but also the level design. There are also coins to collect with extra notes or loops. The higher they are on the screen, the higher the note will be, and they play from left to right. And the music from these coins continues for three screens. It might sound a bit confusing, but you really get a feel for this in the level editor. As you play through the campaign, you unlock more tools to make your own levels. And, and Badge, I'm not usually one to get super excited about level editing, but this one really hooked me. The tools are simple to use as well. On the Vita, you use the front touch screen to place objects and the rear touch pad to move, resize and rotate them. I just wish you could start testing your level from the screen you're on, though, rather than having to start from the beginning each time. I've already tested the first two screens. It would have been nice to be able to choose which objects to lay in front of others, so you could put it all together a bit more neatly. Although that would make level creation more complicated. Hex, I think this level editor is definitely a case of easy to learn, hard to master. I spent all this time mixing up bits from different albums to create some interesting platforming, but then realised I hadn't created something musically interesting. <laughs> Really, I did the opposite. I placed all these coins to make a pretty cool tune, but then found myself a bit stuck in terms of platforming. I went online to see if, you know, other people had fared any better, and I found all these recreations of games and their famous theme tunes. Some weren't so good, but if you're willing to do a bit of playtesting, you can find some real gems. I think I need to work on mine a little bit more. Well, at least it was better than Darren's. What do you mean? Mine was incredible. Darren, it was just a statue of you that lasered everyone. <laughs> can't even finish it. Can't even get to the end of it. Uh, you mean you can't finish the level. Only noobs will be lasered. All right. Well, clearly it's it's quite a challenge to make a, a decent sounding level, but also give some good challenge as well. But that's just the kind of challenge I enjoy. Death mode, on the other hand, that super hard timed mode that you unlock after you finish the campaign, that's a challenge I will happily pass on. Oh, really? I, I enjoyed it. I think it's the more brutal it is sometimes, the more rewarding it is to be. But well, what are you giving this, Hex? Well, I especially like that you can cloud sync between PS3 and Vita, which means you can save your game on either console and play it on either console, which is great. I really enjoyed my time with sound shapes. I'm giving it eight and a half. Yeah, I love that this does something different, you know, it makes your brain think a different way, and it's a wonderful blend of platforming and music gaming. So I'm going to give it eight and a half as well, Hex. Hmm. You know what, guys? I don't think I need much more in life than getting to dress up every now and then in awesome costumes and also video games. What about books or food and showers? Distant second. 84 channel multifunction servo controllers, ultrasonic range finders. Yeah, I think I can live without that, Darren. Oh. Well, next week on the show, the Den of Gaming will be transformed into Rock and Roll Central as we check out rock band Blitz. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. Are we gonna dress up again? I want a mohawk. I want to be Ziggy Stardust. I can wear my sparkle pants. <laughs> yeah. Well, until then, gamers, Banjo out. Hex out. Darren out. So can I get out of this mobility inhibiting costume now? I don't know, Darren. I think it's actually a really good look for you. Yeah, plus you held the lift door for us for ages. You've been so helpful today. You you left me there for 25 minutes. Bajo? Hex? Bajo? Goose? This needs to be sure it was ready to go, Darren. We didn't want to have to have a delay on the lift, and, and that's what a companion cube is for. You were trolling me. No, no troll. Negative. You were trolling me. No troll, Darren. A little bit of a troll. No troll. Yeah. You admit it. What? I saw that. What's that? What's that? Hey, who am I? Who am I? I'm Darren. <laughs>